Isaiah 9, in verse 12, says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Now I'll go to several churches that's been named Lighthouse. I notice your church is uh, called Lighthouse. And uh, we know that Jesus is the true light. Amen? In John 1, John called a, was called to preach uh, the coming of the true light that lights the heart of man. But Jesus gave us some insight as to who would be used to broadcast or reflect His pure light to all the world. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, Scripture tells us that ye are the light of the world. So tonight we're going to look at churches and um, <clears throat> to see whether they're being the light Jesus expects us to be. We're living in the last days. And I think that that ought to be a consideration through all this because uh, in the end times, the Bible warns that there's going to be widespread apostasy. The word apostasy means that once these people did preach the gospel, these churches did preach the gospel, but not anymore. They've departed from the faith. They're, they've become apostate. And we see that going on more and more uh, in the world today. Just as Scripture warned us that it would be preceding the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was an article about a lighthouse offshore in North Carolina near the, near the outer bank of the continental shelf. And there lies one of the most dangerous stretches of water on earth. Over the past 400 years, it's become known as the graveyard of the Atlantic. Now the problem is a 14 mile long sandbar of which is called Diamond Shoals. And the problem with this sandbar is that it's constantly moving. And uh, it doesn't stay put. It doesn't stay where it's supposed to be. And much of the sandbar is just under the surface of the water, so the ships can't see it visibly, much of it. And many ships have sunk off of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina in the Atlantic Ocean. And so the U.S. government constructed a lighthouse in Cape Hatteras in 1870. It's the biggest lighthouse in the United States. 208 foot. 12 stories tall. It has uh, 48 inch walls. And it has a staircase of 248 steps. So what's the, pur what's the purpose of this lighthouse? Well, it was built to save lives and property. That's its only purpose. Save lives and property. And when you think about it, churches have the same purpose. Amen? It's a dark and dangerous place the world is. And getting darker all the time. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, the Bible says. So the world is not getting better, but the world is getting worse. And in such a world as that, people are sailing through life in very dangerous waters. The devil is always trying to throw out obstacles in our way. Have you ever been cruising through life feeling that you're on top of the world? Everything's just going your way. And suddenly you hit a snag. Could be sickness. Maybe a loss of job. Maybe some sort of financial loss. Life in a shambles all of a sudden. These are shifting sandbars. And the devil wants to steal your victory. 
But thank God there's a lighthouse, amen? In the dark old world that we live in, there's a lighthouse. And God has put a lighthouse in darkness that projects a light unto the seas of life. All biblical churches have the same purpose, and that is to save souls being destroyed on the rocks of sin. Now, I'm concerned that churches in general have forgotten their mission today. And they've, they've gotten into all kinds of other things, like, uh, well, they think that the, the job of the church is to feed the needy and provide the needy with clothing. That's a good thing to do. That's a wonderful thing to do. But that's not the job of the church. That's not the chief purpose of the church. Other churches think, well, our mission is to have fellowship with one another. Hey, that's a great thing too. I'm not against fellowship with one another. That's wonderful. But that's not the chief mission of the church. Others think, well, what we have today is a crisis in the family, and uh, what we need is uh, to counsel uh, dysfunctional families. Whose family is not dysfunctional? Can you name a perfect family for me? I'll give you a teddy bear if you can. You'd never run out of prospects if you're going to be counseling dysfunctional families. That's not the mission of the church. Mission of the church is soul winning. Mission of the church is to shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to an unsaved and dying world. That's the mission of the church. First Peter 2 verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness unto His marvelous light. Now, if the light is to continue to shine and do its job, there has to be a lighthouse keeper. It's one thing to have a lighthouse. That's like having a church building and having the building empty. No pastor, no people, no nothing. Just the just church building. So a lighthouse is no good, Pastor, without a lighthouse keeper. And what's the keeper do? His whole purpose is to keep that light burning. That's his whole purpose. Burn it at all costs. He had to constantly clean and maintain and repair the light. If the flame burned low or the lens and mirrors were dirty or the wick of the old oil burner and burner needed trimming, he had to go to work because lives depended upon him maintaining that light. They were sailors at sea. They were depending on him. The first lighthouse keeper at Cape Hadras was Adam Gaskins. Adam Gaskins was on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He made $333 a year in 1870 and a place to live. Less than a dollar a day. And due to his hard work and those who followed him, the light burned 129 years without missing a beat. 47,000 nights without going out. Those who kept the light burning were known as keepers of the flame. Well now, friend, if you're saved, you're a keeper of the flame. All saved people are keeper, keepers of the flame. 
And as this world grows darker and gets ever closer to the shore of eternal judgment, there's a greater need for the light of the gospel to shine. There's souls in the balance who will sink into hell if we don't let our light shine. Most of the church world will moan and uh, complain about the sinful condition of the world, but where's the light? Where's the light? There came a time when the Cape Hatteras lighthouse was in danger and the constant wave action of the sea had eroded uh, the foundations of the lighthouse until many feared that the lighthouse was just going to topple right into the sea. What, what the problem was, they built it too far out toward the shore in the beginning. And over the years, the shoreline kept eroding and eroding and eroding. And so reached the point, they said, something's going to have to be done here. This lighthouse is just not going to not going to stand much longer. A, a strong uh, hurricane comes by and uh, we might lose the lighthouse. So, the decision was made to move it. 2,900 feet southwest and 1,600 feet inland. Uh, back in 1999. And it was in all the newspapers that they were going to move the lighthouse, and uh, uh, the International Chimney Corporation of Brooklyn, New York, won the contract for that, for that moving. They had, this, they had an unusual slogan. Their slogan was, if you can build it, we can move it, if you have enough money. So the U.S. government spent two and a half million dollars uh, on moving that lighthouse. And uh, they jacked it up and they built a railway from the lighthouse to where it was going to be moved. Railroad track. And people came from miles around. I'm, I'm telling you what, they, they said, they're going to move the lighthouse. Let's go watch the lighthouse being moved. And they were even camping out there. And they thought they was going to see something great, something wonderful, something exciting. But they only moved the lighthouse maybe a foot a day. On a good day, maybe two feet. So that became like watching paint dry. They got bored and people left. What as exciting as they thought it was going to be. But whenever they moved the lighthouse, something happened. It lost its purpose. And so now it's just a park, a museum where people go to admire, to enjoy it, learn from it. But the lighthouse at Cape Hatteras doesn't save anybody anymore. There's a lot of churches like that. They're just museums. They're used to be. Used to be people got saved uh, at the preaching of the gospel, but not anymore. They've dried up. The fire of God is not upon them anymore. They're not preaching the true light of Jesus Christ. They're into all kinds of other activities. Environmentalism, politics, have it uh, uh, one thing or another, but they're not preaching the gospel. It's a sad situation. Churches used to be life's changing stations. And so now many of them have become more than, little more than just museums. 
people aren't being saved anymore. And so if people come there to ease their conscience or to be entertained with rock bands, but there's not anyone being saved. It's a sad situation. All up and down the East Coast are uh, yacht clubs in every city. And these yacht clubs started out, they started out well as well. Uh, they started out uh, on the right track as well. Yacht clubs started out being rescue stations or they started being uh, rescue personnel. When a, when a boat was uh, out uh, off the shore and got into trouble, maybe they ran out of fuel or Maybe they uh, uh, sprung a leak and was about to sink or something. These yacht clubs would take off and they'd go out there and they'd try to help this guy and do what they can uh, to, for, to keep his boat from sinking or to pull him, pull him on into harbor. That's what they started out doing. They don't do that anymore. My wife and I are from Fort Myers, Florida. They have a yacht club there too. And uh, the biggest thing on the calendar for the yacht club in Fort Myers is Christmas. And uh, they have a contest where they decorate their boats with all kinds of Christmas lights. And the winner of the contest is the one with the most lights. And so this just becomes a drunken party at sea as they parade along uh, the river. Somewhere along the line, they lost their purpose. They're not being used to save anybody at sea anymore. They got off track. And churches have done the same thing. Now, to rescue the perishing is hard work. It's not easy work. It's, it's, it's the hardest work I've ever done. Saving uh, souls. Preaching the gospel, saving souls. Soul winning. That's the hardest work I've ever done. It's not easy work. But it's the most rewarding work. And it, it pays eternal dividends. And so, the light has all but gone out in many churches today. Even though they've moved the lighthouse at Cape Hatteras, the original problem still exists. Diamond Shoals is still there. And ships still sink off of Cape Hatteras. Even with GPSs, all the navigational systems they have, Ships still sink because of diamond shoals. And people are still lost. People are still lost. People still need the gospel. Right. So friend, you and I cannot, uh, we can't uh, afford to let the light of the gospel die. There's no other light out there. If Churches do not shine the light. Who else is going to shine the light? Certainly the world's not going to shine the light. There's no other keeper of the flame. You and I are the only keepers of the flame there are. No one else to take up the mantle. Jesus called you and I to be keepers of the flame. To tell the world about the Savior and how that He came and how that He... Uh, at some 33 years old, he went to a little hill outside the city of Jerusalem and he died on Calvary. And he took every sin that you ever committed or ever will commit. And he took every sin that I ever committed or ever will commit and he died for that sin on Calvary. He, he was buried. On the third day he arose and he conquered death and he conquered hell and he conquered the conquered the grave. 
The world needs that message. Friends of yours need that message. Relatives of ours need that message. They're lost. It's the only one that saves.